Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about headphone comfort and why choosing a comfortable headphone is really important. I've been in the headphone hobby for over 25 years and in all that time I've tried hundreds of headphones. And at the end of this video I'm going to show you what I think is the most comfortable headphone I've ever used. Um, Bert? Yes? As the show producer, I must tell you, the quality of your video camera there is terrible. Really? Uh, well, what should we do? Actually, I've hired a cinematographer. We can't afford a new cinematographer. Who is he? Me! Me cinematographer! You? What do you know about making videos? Oh, watch this! Oh, wow. Hire this guy! He's hired! Oh, thank you. You must regret this. Let's get back to the subject of headphone comfort. We're going to talk specifically about physical comfort. So this is not about audio or audio quality. And we're going to address full-sized headphones. Comfortable headphones that fit well simply increase the enjoyment of listening to your music. You want a headphone that feels as though it disappears on your head. You should barely notice your headphones at all. A headphone should surround you in complete comfort, like a, like a cozy blanket. You mean like this? Um, yeah, exactly like that. <sighs> when you are listening to music on your headphones, your focus should be on the magnificent wonder of audio. If a headphone is uncomfortable, there's a competition between listening pleasure and pain. You don't want this competition going on. Now here's a graph of headphone enjoyment or comfort over time. The graph should look like this. Enjoyment or comfort should stay pretty much steady, declining only very slowly over a long period of time. Like the comfortable headphones I am wearing now. Actually, what are you wearing there? Studio monitors? The Sony MDR7506 studio monitors. Standard in the industry. Ah, those are pretty comfortable. But with an uncomfortable headphone, your enjoyment quickly goes down the longer or the more time the headphone is on your head. That graph looks a little different. You see, with really uncomfortable headphones, your level of enjoyment quickly diminishes. How much of a priority is comfort for you? I can tell you that for me, comfort is at the top of the list, even more important than how a headphone sounds. Really? Isn't sound the most important quality of a headphone? Well, Grover, if a headphone isn't comfortable, no matter how good it sounds, the discomfort can really take away from the experience. It can be awful. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're driving a luxury car, like a Porsche. Driving that type of car may be a fantastic driving experience, but what if you're sitting on a hard rock the whole time? How would that affect your enjoyment of the car? What if every time you use the Porsche, you had to sit on the rock? You can only enjoy the car sparingly, driving it only now and then, and only as long as you could endure the discomfort. At the very least, you would have to take breaks due to the pain. That's no fun at all. Oh yeah, that is like having dinner without cookie. Okay. Uh, it all comes down to this. The more painful it is to wear a headphone, the less you will use it. You will also be less likely to buy headphones from that same manufacturer in the future. Okay, so we know uncomfortable headphones are bad, but where and how does a headphone cause discomfort? Let's take a look at an ear. There, look in my ear. You don't have any ears. I meant a human ear. I hired a guy just today for that. His name is the Big Giant Head. Why? Because he is a big giant head. I see. Oh, uh, nice to meet you. There are three types of discomfort people can have with headphones. One, pressure on the ear cartilage. Two, pressure on the jaw, below the ear, behind the ear, above the ear. Three, excessive warmth or heat. And that gets worse with time, the longer you wear the headphone. Also, heat is worse in the summer or in warm weather. Let's go over the parts of the headphone that affect comfort and what to pay attention to. First, let's take a look at the headband. The headband is the top part of the headphone that rests on your head. The pressure you feel on the top of the head is affected by the overall weight of the headphones. Now let's take a look at the ear cups. The ear cups pressing against the sides of the head can produce discomfort if the pressure is too high. Headphone enthusiasts often call this clamping pressure because it feels like a clamp on your head. 
Clamping is a measure of force and is measured in newtons, so a really loose headphone would be about maybe 1.5 newtons, and a super tight, painful headphone might be maybe 10 newtons. That's clamping pressure. What did you call it? Clamping pressure, right? Wrong. I call it caliper pressure. Oh yeah, I've heard that term for it too. It's like the caliper brakes on a bicycle. If you leave it on long enough, it can crush you like a grape. Thankfully, clamping pressure on headphones is never quite that bad. But you can't have clamping pressure that is too low either. A tight fit between the headphone and your ear is necessary in order to have what we call passive attenuation. Um, what, what is passive attenuation? Passive attenuation is just the ability of the headset to uh, reduce the surrounding noise just by wearing the headphones. So passive attenuation does not use stuff like um, electronic noise reduction. And passive attenuation is measured in decibels. Take, for example, earmuffs used for sound protection. They have what's called passive attenuation. These are 3M Pelter earmuffs used for sound protection. They reduce sound by 31 decibels, and they are among the best on the market for doing that. You often see baggage handlers who work at the airport use these. Now, headphones actually do this too, but to a lesser extent. So having a good fit on your head means you will have better passive attenuation and pick up less of the outside noise. So what should you look for with regards to headphone comfort? I came up with three things. First, you want to look for comfortable ear pads. Clamping force is measured in newtons, but force and pressure are two different things, and pressure equals force divided by surface area. This means that the bigger the ear pads, the less pressure you will feel on your head. Oh, ear pad round like cookie. Yes, it is. But unlike a cookie, an ear pad should be soft. There are generally two types of ear pads, those made of velour, like these ones, and those made of leather or fake leather, which often has memory foam on the inside. What is the difference between velour and leather ear pads? Well, velour pads are soft and furry. Like me! Um, yeah. Velour also allows more air circulation, so they generally get less hot over long wearing periods. Leather pads can be very soft and often feel luxurious but leather allows less air circulation and can be warmer. Real leather is usually better than fake leather. Fake leather can get stiff, too. Which is more durable? Leather is usually more durable than velour. Thankfully, almost all headphone ear cups can be replaced if they are damaged or used up. The manufacturer usually makes them. The other thing to watch for in over-ear headphones is that the ear pads should go around the ears completely. Does the ear pad touch your ear in any way? Ear pads that do not touch your ear tend to be more comfortable. What if you are not happy with the ear pads you get when you buy a pair of headphones? Ah, good news! You can swap out ear pads on many headphones, but not all of them. There are many manufacturers who make aftermarket ear pads. If you're looking for ear pads, you may also want to check out Brainwave ear pads. Okay, second, the headband needs to be comfortable. It needs to be rigid enough to give you stability and keep the ear pads in correct position over your ears. But it can't be too rigid or apply too much clamping pressure. Wearing headphones should not hurt your head. But how do you know if the headband is comfortable? Well, take a look at the headband. How much of the headband is touching the head? A small area may mean more pressure versus a larger area that is more spread out. Feel the headband with your hand. It should give you an idea of the amount of support and cushioning the headphone band has. Like a shock absorber. Exactly like a shock absorber. Okay, but what if I already have a headphone I like, but the headband is painful? Or what if the cushion on the headband is worn out? That's exactly what is happening to me right now with my HD 800s. Take a look at this headband cushion. It's so thin. I've used these so much over the years that the headband cushion is all worn out. So it's time to throw away those headphones? No, don't throw away your headphones. You have two options in this case. You can often buy a replacement headband cushion from the manufacturer, or as a cheaper option, you can use a seatbelt pad. Seatbelt pad? Yep. A seatbelt pad will provide cushioning and spread the weight, but it may make your headphones look a little ugly. The third thing you need to look for is the weight of the headphones. In terms of comfort, lighter is usually better. Weight becomes more important the longer you wear headphones. If you're mixing music or doing video or sound editing for many hours, for example, a heavy headphone can become really uncomfortable. Having said that, build quality is extremely important and in my opinion, should not be compromised just to achieve a lower weight. 
Now, I've tried all sorts of different headphones and weighed them, and in my opinion, anything over 10 ounces or 280 grams is on the heavy side for a full-size headphone. Now I want to reveal the most comfortable headphone I've ever used. Bert, wait! What if you wear glasses? Like me. Ah, thanks for bringing that up. Headphones and eyeglasses do not get along. They are mortal enemies. Headphones can put pressure on glass frames, which can then press against your head and hurt over time. Do you wear glasses? You may want to look for headphones that have reduced clamping pressure. And with glasses, velour pads can be more comfortable than leather. But some headphones are just so comfortable and so well made that even with glasses, you may feel no discomfort at all. Okay already, now get most comfortable headphone. Ah, this. This right here is the most comfortable headphone I've ever used. And it is a little obscure and you probably have never even heard of it. It came around in the early 2000s, the Sennheiser HD 590. These are open back headphones that are very light, have very low clamping pressure and velour pads. They are also open back and have only one cord, which is also very light. They aren't exactly what I would call audiophile headphones. And when they came out, reviews were very mixed. Sennheiser doesn't even make them anymore. But despite all this, they are without a doubt, extremely comfortable. Bert, how can somebody measure the comfort of their headphones? Well, actually, I've come up with a system that I want to show you guys. I invented two different ways to measure comfort. I'm going to use these for future headphone reviews when I talk about headphone comfort. The first is called a Scott score. Now, yes, I do know a guy named Scott. He was the first subscriber on this channel, but uh, Scott actually stands for Subjective Comfort Over Time. Here's how it works. It's really simple. You wear the headphones for 30 minutes, and then you grade how comfortable the headphone is out of a scale of 10, where 1 is very uncomfortable and painful, and 10 is super comfortable that you barely even feel it on your head. You repeat this every 30 minutes until you reach 180 minutes or 3 hours. For example, here is the Scott score for my Sennheiser HD 500s. Those are pretty high scores. Yes, even after three hours or 180 minutes of continual use, the level of comfort remains high at 9.0. My second system is called the Weight Pressure Head Scale, or WPH for short. How does it work? It's very simple. You give your headphones three scores out of 10. One for weight, one for pressure, and one for heat. How hot the headphones get on your ears. Here are my WPH scores for the Sennheiser HD 590. So that comes to 29 out of 30, for a WPH average of 97%. How long did you wear the headphone to come up with the WPH scores? I wear headphones for one hour straight to come up with the WPH. Okay, so Bert, I know that you have many, many headphones. I don't have that many. Are you kidding me? You have too many headphones. You also have too many Optimus Primes. I, uh, I like Optimus Prime. What are some of the other headphones you consider comfortable? Oh, there's so many. I like the Sony Z7, Sony MDR-1R, which is actually a lot more comfortable than the MDR-1A. I like many AKG headphones. Heck, even my Apple AirPods are pretty comfortable. But I'm more interested in your opinions. I want to know what you YouTubers consider to be your most comfortable headphones. Please let us know in the comments below. And please, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. I should do my own radio show in the morning. We're counting down the top 40 at WNBC New York in the morning with me, Grover.